The World Middleweight Championship is one of the most prestigious prizes in boxing. Through history, we've seen the greats. Sugar Ray Robinson, Carlos Monson, marvellous Marvin Hagler, and in recent times, Bernard Hopkins. But two years ago, the mantle changed hands when young, unbeaten prospect Jermaine Taylor pulled off a massive upset. And new Taylor's got it! Hopkins' long reign is over! Taylor proved it was no fluke by beating Hopkins again, and the world seemed to be at his feet. Still middleweight champion of the world! He retained his crown against the brilliant Ronald Winky Wright, but since then Taylor has been a disappointment, looking unconvincing and lethargic against Cassie Muma. Taylor doesn't seem to have the strength to stand his ground now, and he's throwing nothing, gasping for breath. And almost disinterested against Corey Spinks. Jermaine Taylor, is he beginning to throw this away? That night, another young, powerful middleweight stole the show. Kelly Pavlik was an unknown quantity until he dispatched the much-feared Edison Miranda in a thrilling war. Kelly Pavley believes he's the heir apparent, but would his style bring out the best in Taylor? Face to face, two fighters with unbeaten records, Jermaine Taylor making the fifth defence of his WBC and WBO world middleweight titles against the exciting knockout specialist Kelly Pavlik, big five special from Atlantic City. Hi there, Jermaine Taylor had been in with the best but hadn't faced anyone quite like Kelly Pavlik, a man who had knocked out 28 of his 31 opponents. Could the world champion finally silence his critics? Just to remind you, the host broadcaster HBO did not offer widescreen coverage of this fight. Let's get straight to the boardwalk hall in Atlantic City. Kelly Pavlik on his way to the ring as we join Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark. You know, explosive punches in boxing really create a buzz, and this fellow has stirred the imagination with what he did to Edison Miranda in their fight, blasting him out in seven rounds, and Miranda started a slight favourite for that as well. Pavlik just kept walking forward, throwing big shots until he'd got the job done, and that has excited television executives and boxing fans all over America in many ways, Pavlik is the story tonight, but is he going to be good enough? Has he got the pedigree to cope with Jermaine Taylor? That is the big question we are about to have answered. And here comes Taylor on his way to the ring, getting a decidedly mixed reaction. Let's face it, recent performances have been disappointing. Some say lacklustre. He has got a few fans here. Look at Emmanuel Stewart here, geeing him up. I think they know this is a tough one, Glenn. Yeah, I think they know Pavlik will be fired up. He wants it, he's got a lot of desire. And Taylor really has to put on a very good performance. Pavlik wants this badly. Emmanuel Stewart saying in the build-up a few days ago, I don't know if this was a psychological ploy, he doesn't think either Pavlik or his trainer belong in this league. That's really charged it up a little. But Taylor has beaten the long-reigning world champion Bernard Hopkins twice. He drew as well with Winky Wright. There's a check on their records. Pavlik, 31-0. Taylor hasn't lost either, just that draw as a blemish against Winky Wright on his record. So something's got to give here. Here's Michael Buffer. By way of Caesars Atlantic City, Debella Entertainment. Just checking as the tail on the tape after Michael Buffer's uh, full start for the night. That doesn't often happen. No three knockdown rules, standing eight count not in effect. No fighter can be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop it, though the doctor would be consulted and taken notice of, of course. We're on the famous boardwalk 
in Atlantic City on the New Jersey Shore, about two hours south of New York. Scene of so many battles down the years. Tyson v. Spinks, perhaps the most famous in 1988. Holyfield fought here, Lennox Lewis as well. Nassim Hamid against Wayne McCullough and Arturo Gatti has been the big star in this hall in recent years. Pavlik could take over with an explosive display tonight. Well, Michael Buffett getting off to a flying start there when Kenny Pavlik does the same thing. City, Debella Entertainment, in association with Top Rank Incorporated, are proud to present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the universally recognized middleweight championship of the world. Sponsored by FreeTheFan.com. The best place to talk about sports, sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board Boxing Commissioner, Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Tony Orlando, the World Boxing Council President, Jose Suleiman, and the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system from Italy, Guido Cavallari, from the United States, Julie Letterman, from the United States, John Stewart. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action at the bell, Steve Smoger. And now, undefeated challenger versus undefeated champion. Somebody's oh has gotta go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gray with red, official weight, 159, one half pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 31 bouts, 31 victories, including 58 knockouts. From Youngstown, Ohio, the undefeated number one right middleweight contender in the world, Kelly. Wearing white with a razorback red trim. Official weight, 159 pounds. Professional record, 28 bouts without a loss. 27 victories, including 17 knockouts with one bout even. He's the fighting pride of Little Rock, Arkansas. The universally recognized, undefeated, reigning, defending, middleweight champion of the world, Jermaine. Taylor, who needs to show some bad intentions tonight. No, 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 Steve Smoger, the referee, has handled a lot of Chris Eubank fights in the past. In the dressing rooms, please obey my commands, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself at all times. God bless you both. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. Thank you. They eventually do. Jermaine Taylor has been taken off to Lennox Lewis's old haunt, the Pocono Mountains, to prepare for this. For the first time, he's been made to watch tapes of his opponent. Time and time again, watch Pavlik's right hand. Bob Aram, his promoter, says he might be as heavy a hitter as Tommy Hearns. That's saying something, isn't it? Is it hype, or can he deliver? White Trunks, defending champion, fifth defense for Jermaine Taylor tonight. The silver of Kelly Pavlik, who calls himself the ghost. Taylor, busy early, looking for looping rights. He's sometimes open to those. Pavlik. Well, he's come out really fired up, has he, Taylor? He's got a, a point to prove here. Needs a restatement of what he's about. It's a far start by the defending champion. Some people have wondered even if he wants to really fight. Having seen some of his rather insipid efforts in 
recent contest, notably against Kasim Umar and Corey Spinks. But he's in here with an orthodox fighter tonight. His left jab comes back more into play. That's what his camp is saying, and that'll work for him in this fight. Yep, his last three fights have been against difficult opponents. He hasn't looked good, but he can make amends here. He needs to make amends, doesn't he? Because some people are calling him the most disappointing high-profile world champion out there. And he arrived as a big star, didn't he, too, when he beat Bernard Hopkins. Has it built on that? Needs to tonight. Is Pavlik good enough, though? Is he just a bit of a banger, or can he cope technically at this level? Taylor started fast. Big right hand gets through. And another one. Pavlik pokes his tongue out at him. But Pavlik's shown in the past that he's up for a fight. Now he's starting to warm up. Listen to the crowd. As Pavlik lands his first right hand, Taylor took them okay. That's uh, a key thing here. Pavlik says a lot of people think I'm not very good till they get hit by me. But Taylor is busier in the opening round. Getting that jab off well there. Looking to impose himself, Jermaine Taylor, in this first round. Pavlik, though, looks unruffled and lands a heavy right again. Taylor took it okay, though. Pavlik just starting to get into the round a little bit more, landing the right hand. It's a good start. Plenty going on early on. Pavlik's taken a few, but he's come back. Come back well in the second half of the round, Pavlik. It was a good start from Taylor. Maybe a little busier. Big support for Pavlik from those folk from Youngstown, Ohio. Only 80,000 people population, 5,000 of this in arena. But they've seen their man lose that first round, I fancy. Hey, what would you like for breakfast? Juicy raisins, succulent sultanas, black currants, cranberries, rolled oats. That's Alpen high fruit with lashings of milk. Too fruity for you. You should try the nut crunch. Pecans, hazelnuts. Welcome back to Atlantic City. Two people doing talking in that corner, which is not good really. Jack Lowe and the cut man, Miguel Diaz. Pavlik is intelligent, likeable guy with a no-nonsense approach to his business. Is he going to be catapulted to stardom tonight? Taylor, though, did start well in contrast to some of his recent displays. Taylor, the defending champion in the white trunks, He's working well with that jab early on, Glenn. Yes, he is. Taylor did start well, but Pavlik's corner seemed quite happy. And just were looking for the, the double jab and the right hand. They seemed to think the opportunity would come. Works well close in there. The referee said break. They didn't. Steve Smoker wasn't able to dive in at all. They're back to work straight away. The styles that make fights, and I think the styles here are going to blend well. Yep, the early signs are encouraging. Public looking for that right hand. Taylor's a little bit open to it. She seems to have panicked a bit for me. Taylor making a few mistakes. Public starting to get his own jab into the equation. He says when he was an amateur, he was more boxer and stylist than big puncher. It's a good right hand there, twice over. He's bent the knees of Pavlik. Pavlik's hurt. He's open. Taylor's going for him here. Can he take him out? Big crisis. Pavlik could be beaten here. In the second round, he goes down and gets up a bit too quickly. Oh my goodness, he's in trouble now. Mandatory eight. He made a mistake getting up so early. The legs are still wobbly. 
Long time to go in the round as well. We're only halfway through it. Taylor here can come up with a spectacular win. How can Pavlik get through this? He's got to hold on. He's really got to hold on now. He's fighting through a fog. Taylor, now a huge right. He's all over the place. The fight is on the verge of being stopped here. Well, he's hanging on for dear life. Pavlik, he's got to try and clear the head. Don't give Taylor a clean shot. He's got to hold on, somehow, get through the crisis. There's still 50 seconds in the round left. 50 seconds for Taylor to tee off with those big rights. Pavlik's finding out what it's like now at the top world level. And Taylor is answering his critics here in spectacular fashion so far. Yeah, good punches from Taylor. He's opening up, he's relaxed. This is the start he wanted. Pavlik finds the wherewithal somehow in his crisis to throw a couple of right hands. He's 20 seconds away from that bow. He needs it so very, very badly. Taylor looks as if he's momentarily punched himself out in this round. Thrown a lot of punches. Sensational round. We're going to get the bow any second against the odds. Kelly Pavlik has somehow, don't ask me how, got through it and totters back to his corner just about. Is the minute going to be long enough, Glenn? Well, he recovered. He, he hung in there. Yeah, right. A terrible yeah, right. round yeah. for so Kelly okay, Pavlik, but he did manage to survive. Taylor, some might say he left him off the hook there, punched himself out, couldn't quite finish him off. Well, he threw an awful lot of punches, didn't he? But look where the hands are of Kelly Pavlin, right down by his sides, wide open. He nicknamed the ghost. He was easy enough to see there. Well, Pavlik was supposed to be the big sledgehammer puncher, but it's Jermaine Taylor who has unleashed the heavy shots here to some effect. But Pavlik is still somehow there going into the third round of this. Well, what will go to Jermaine Taylor's mind after throwing everything he had and Pavlik is still in front of him. And that conditioning has helped to clear his head maybe. All the hard training and now he starts to tee off or tries to on Taylor. But Pavlik's defence is not as tight. He is open occasionally, he even was against Miranda. Might he pay for it again here? Well, he's got to keep busy, Pavlik can't allow Taylor to get set to find the, the classy punches. Has Taylor missed his chance? Or is another one just around the corner? No shortage of incident here. Well, the head is starting to clear of Pavlik, starting to let the shots go again. But has he got a plan B if his big punch doesn't detonate Pavlik? That was one of the questions going in. Would he be good enough technically if it developed into a long fight? Would Taylor just know too much for him, having negotiated tricky customers like Bernard Hopkins and Winky Ryden held his own. Well, it's Taylor who's looking to hold a little bit inside himself as a good right hand lands from Pavlik. Pavlik's come back well in this round so far. Taylor quieter on the back foot. It can go negative. Taylor Pavlik here drives him back, might have stung him with one of those. Well, it was a good combination, body and head. Listen to Pavlik's fans. Taylor, for doing very little in this round. He's let Pavlik back into the contest. 
And remember, he is a puncher, public, but here comes Taylor. He looks a bit faster and more accurate, doesn't he, with his work as well. Described public as too slow, too wild, really, to have a chance with me. That's what he told me this week. Looks better when he puts his combinations together, Taylor. He's the, the better stylist of the two. Although Taylor ended the round run, it was Pavlik's round, I think. The UEFA Champions League. 14 live games on Sky Sports. Tuesday from 5, CSKA Moscow Fenerbahce. Lyon Rangers and Stuttgart Barcelona. Then Wednesday from 6, Liverpool Marseille. Chelsea's new regime face Valencia and Celtic play European champions Milan. Everything he touches turns to goals. The UEFA Champions League, Tuesday and Wednesday on Sky Sports. You can't let him get too many punches off him. Not just tie him up. But don't let him get too many shots off him. That was fascinating, that last round. Pavlik. He, he can't, though, he can't get Taylor going with any of these shots as such. He, he's not, not really managed to get him into any kind of daze with them, has he? No, there was a little point where he opened up quite well, but Taylor come firing back. This is round four for the World Middleweight Championship. WBC, WBO versions to be exact. Taylor, no boxing fan, and according to one report, wasn't even sure which titles he still currently held. It's hard to believe, really. Yes, he just had to look at his belts, wouldn't he, really? Public still trying to walk Taylor down. Needs to keep Taylor under pressure, not let him get into a rhythm. What Taylor mustn't do is go into that negative, cautious, conservative mindset we've seen a bit too often from him during his reign. All his World Championship fights so far have gone the full distance. He nearly finished off Pavlik in two tonight. Nearly. That looked low blow. Low blow with the left hand from Jermaine Taylor. Pavlik wants to make nothing of it at all. Doesn't want to break, wants to get back to work. Well, they've called this fight throwback, and Pavlik is a throwback, isn't he? No nonsense, just wants to fight. Taylor needs to keep up his energy levels in this fight. Has to stay with Pavlik's work rate. Pavlik's people say he throws an average of about 95 punches around, whereas Taylor, they reckon, has been about half of that during his World Championship reign. The body shot, the right hand going in there from Pavlik, just trying to slow Taylor down. Clever work from Jermaine Taylor, accurate punching, fought his way cleverly outside the corner. He's just picking little holes in Pavlik's defence, and he has the faster hands too, I think. There's left right from Pavlik. I think there's no doubt that the word's gone out to Jermaine Taylor, Glenn, that it's not just enough for him to be a world champion picking up big TV money. He's got to be exciting as well. He has to have marquee value. This has been a good fight here so far tonight. Well, I think Pavlik was always going to take the fight to Taylor and make him fight. Good left jab, that from Pavlik. Real ramrod quality about it. But in comparison to Taylor, he can occasionally look a little one-dimensional. Yes, at times he's a little upright. Hangs that chin in the air. But he's been quite positive in that round, Pavlik. Hey, what would you like for breakfast? Juicy raisins. Succulent sultanas, black currants, cranberries, rolled oats. That's Alpen high fruit with lashings of milk. Too fruity for you. You should try the nut crunch. Pecans, hazelnuts. 
watching his right hand. That's all. You're not getting it for nothing else. Just watch. I see you sitting on that. Nadia Stewart, so experienced in that uh, corner. I think he fully corner. respects Pavlik, but uh, they've been saying publicly that they think it might be an easy fight for Taylor. There's some talk that it's Taylor's last fight, but tonight he's only weighing 11 stone 12, so really, that's in the ring. <laughs> he's no really a super middleweight, and he was kind of poo-pooing the idea that he wouldn't stay at middleweight the other day. White trunks, remember, the defending champion. Fifth defense for Jermaine Taylor from President Clinton, or former President Clinton's hometown of Little Rock, Arkansas. And the public trying to land with that right hand. Kept on talking about how he might knock out Jermaine Taylor, that was all the talk, and you just wondered whether, what would happen if he, when he landed it, it wasn't having the effect he thought it would have in the fight. Well, he's got to land it first, and he's walking forward, but he's just giving Taylor a bit too much room. He needs to get to him that bit quicker. They're trying to make Taylor fight three minutes of the round. The public's coming forward, but not doing much, and Taylor's picking him off. That was a nice right from Taylor. I get the feeling that Pavlik's wait, waiting to land a jackpot punch. Yes, I think he needs to try and throw more, not just wait for one single one. Taylor's the cuter, the better boxer of the two. All the time, Pavlik's waiting and trying to line up that big right hand. Taylor is teeing off with a couple of shots, never letting him quite get set for it. As a right hand, glancing blow really that time from Jermaine Taylor. The public not getting through with many of these punches. He's walking forward, he's missing with them. It's Taylor that's picking up the points. composed display this by Taylor so far. I don't think anybody really disputed that he had class, just that he wasn't positive enough, enough in showing it. Be better from Pavlik landing with the, the jab. Taylor looking to have the edge technically. We thought he might have. And then Pavlik a bit too slow with the right hand. Broadcast it, almost sent a telegram to say it was coming. Taylor had the answers and just outboxed him, I thought, in that round. Because we've been voted the best individual pension provider by independent financial advisors, it's no wonder we're the most trusted choice for pensions. Have a chat with your financial advisor or come in and see us at any branch of Lloyd's TSB. Scottish Widows. Preparation is everything. Well, maybe some concern in the Kelly public corner. Is he running out of ideas a little here, Glenn? He touch him with yeah, right he's hand. just trying to walk him down, looking for the jab in the right hand, and he needs a bit more than the round from Taylor, who just picked his punches. In contrast, all the vibes from the Taylor corner were confidence. Emmanuel Stewart, who was really pretty disgusted with Taylor last time out against Corey Spinks, sounded pretty bullish about Taylor's work so far in this one. But there are a few chapters left to write, possibly. I must say, in the second round, I did not think Pavlok was going to get through it. Well, he did tremendously well to get through it. It was really a desperate round for him. But he's still here. 
Pope with the jab. And then a left hook from Taylor. Havlick tries to come back with that right hand of his again. He's just hoping that one of those can get Taylor all woozy. And the thing starts to turn on its head. It hasn't happened yet. A little better for Pavlik, putting Taylor under a bit of pressure. Needs to keep that pressure on. Starting to let the leather flow, isn't he, Jermaine Taylor here? Bloody nose as well for Pavlik now. These two have met before in the amateurs. When Pavlik was only 17 and Taylor was 21, Taylor won that on the computer by 11 points to 5. Pavlik's been more accurate in this round, starting to get through. Just not enough variety about Pavlik's work, really. Left jab and a right hand, and it's almost something that Taylor can read. Yeah, he's straight in and out, isn't he? Very upright, looking for the, the straight punches. Almost European in style, in fact, isn't he? Yes, Pavlik? he is. But he could do with a little more head movement. That's why he leaves himself open to the, the quick counters from Taylor. been taken to school a little at the moment Pavlik in truth might only take one punch though to change things but Taylor it is who looks to unleash with his back to the ropes this is with the more eye-catching punches weren't they just looks to explode them combinations off So far, this is the performance that Jermaine Taylor has needed to put a coat of paint on his reputation. And he's putting the rounds away a little as Pavlik kind of uh, just runs out of ideas in the fight a little. Because you just wonder, has he got a plan B, Pavlik? Might need plan C as well here. Keep the pace going. Keep the pace going. Come on. Bend your knees a little bit inside. Bend your knees. Stand a double jab and it's easy. Come on. Big ones. Big ones. You're letting him take the lead too much tonight. Now he's winning the talent because he's more consistent than you are. You had to start working your jab or whatever and then try to put just back it up. He's pushing you straight to the rope. Just get back and start working your jab. You understand? That gives him problem, but it don't work. Slightly more critical tone from Emmanuel Stewart in Taylor's corner this time. Yep, I was pleased in that round, but I still thought it was a, a Taylor round. This is the latest instalment in the classic middleweight division, going back through the years with the likes of Stan, Petrol, Harry, Greb, Nicky Walker, Sugar Ray Robinson, Jake LaMotta, Carmen Basilio, Benvenuti, Monzon, Hagler, Hopkins. Great division, and Taylor, the current boss in charge here against Kelly Pavlik. He's just done a bit too much for him so far, but there's plenty of time to go in this. There's Taylor with the better variety, the more polished, and that's given him a, a little lead for me at this moment. Yeah, I think that's how most people would be reading it. There's that jab from Taylor. That's a good right hand from Pavlik. Gets through with it. He has finished off 21 of his 31 opponents inside two rounds, Kelly Pavlik. But none of those 31 opponents was called Jermaine Taylor. He's still got to respect punch power like that. He must hurt when he lands. Still waiting for that one explosive moment. I say there's never been too much sign in Taylor's career so far that he's got a bad chin. Looks like he takes a shot, doesn't it? Although Hopkins, I think, hurt him quite a bit late on in their first fight. Well, Pavlik's starting to get the jab working more. That's not allowing Taylor to get set. Now all he needs to do is get that right hand going in. He's outworking Taylor in this round so far, Pavlik.
but it's not a wide repertoire, is it, that he's producing? No, it's not. I don't think, you know, he, that's what they train for. They train for the, the jab and the straight right hand. And maybe they need more. But so far in this round, it's been enough. There's that right hand, he gets through again. Again, Taylor takes it all. He didn't take that one so well. Good right hand. And then the left uppercut. Taylor is in trouble for the first time. Pavlik's unloading. Taylor's going to have to be stopped. That fight is turned sensationally round. And Kelly Pavlik, out of nowhere, is the middleweight champion of the world. We have a sensation here in Atlantic City. seconds Jermaine Taylor is dethroned well he did it with the punches he's been looking for the double jab the right hand he finally just got that punch on and that's what it needed he's got two punch power and it's done for Jermaine Taylor the seventh round again lucky round for Kelly Pavlik of Youngstown Ohio Taylor looked the boss, Taylor looked in control, he looked to be outboxing and outsmarting public, but it's a tale as old as time in boxing. If you've got that equalising power, you can turn it around, and that's what happened here in a truly memorable few moments in the history of this great division. Yeah, he set him up with a few good jabs and right hands, and then look, he really troubles. He really feels that punch, Jermaine Taylor. The jab, the left hand is down of Taylor. He sees it, and look at that right. It was a concussive shot, and from there, there was no place to hide for Jermaine Taylor. The left uppercut was a peach too. Yeah, he got it in, and then the right uppercut, and then that was a crunching left hook. Everything falls out of Jermaine Taylor. And he's down. Well, he finally fought, found a bit more variety, didn't he, with those uppercuts. Hadn't shown them, but a left and a right. And then a beautiful left hook to finish it. And in those few seconds, I think you saw the astounding drama that boxing can produce. They won't forget this one. No, and the comeback from that terrible second round to finish the fight in this sort of style very good there's going to be some celebrating in Atlantic City tonight well they go don't they they talk and they talk a lot about the old great fights in this division of Sugar Ray Robinson and Jake Lamotta and Carmen Basilio Hagler and Hans and so on in its own way there was a piece of the history as well in the middleweights middleweight championship bouts in boxing history Referee Steve Smoger steps in, calls a halt at two minutes, 14 seconds, round number seven. The winner by TKO victory and new undefeated middleweight champion of the world, Kelly, the ghost, Pavlik. How close were you? being knocked out in the second round. I, you know, I ain't gonna lie, Larry. You probably would have good one. Uh, obviously, it took the legs from me. You see the way I, uh, you know, got, I went down, obviously, and I got back up. It was still a little shaky, you know, but uh, being there with Jermaine, he can't punch like a mule. Uh, he's a big natural middleweight, so I did whatever I possibly can to survive the rest of that round. Describe what you see. I see a bit of me with a lot of punches. Uh, you know, but we sat there, we got through it. We, uh, you know, showed that we have a lot of heart, and, uh, he hit me, I mean, I got back up, he hit me some, uh, or a couple other hard shots that I got through. But uh, first, I'd like to thank the Lord God himself and bless me with everything and my daughter back home. And the fans of Youngstown, baby! Youngstown! Youngstown! Um, Kelly, at that moment when you were down, give us your thoughts. Give us your thought process. Is I came all this way to be knocked out in two rounds. Um, how do I get out of this? You really want to know what I thought? Yeah. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> uh, but you know what? We dug through it. We did it against Zuniga. You know, Jimmy can hit. He's fighting slick veterans, uh, smaller guys, but they could, they could uh, slip punches. He caught me flush, and he's a big kid. I went down, but I showed the heart. And, uh, you know, once I got back up and got, you know, 